Hello Reapers, my name is Seth, and today we're going to be talking about the Trove to Trove Vanguardian class. Which everybody just keeps calling Vanguard, because Vanguardian doesn't really make grammatical sense to me, but uh, maybe that's just me. In either case, this is an absolutely beautiful character. He's very, very powerful as well. And today we're going to be talking about how you actually attain the class, because there's actually quite a few ways of getting it, including a couple methods for free-to-play players to get it as well. Now, one thing that's very interesting to note is that he's not actually going to be uh, under the crafting... Where Where is the chaotic crafter? That's it. Uh, he's not actually going to be a starting class. He's not a basic class, and he's not an advanced class. This is actually Trove's first expert class. That's what the devs have since named it, which means that potentially in the future, we will see more expert classes added to the game because a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, uh, the devs ended up actually talking about how they wanted to add a total of maybe 24 classes to Trove's entirety. We'll see if that number ends up actually being reached one day or changed because with this character being added to the game, the roster goes up to one, two, 16. Yeah, that's right. I was going to say 15, but 15 is what the roster was already at. This character bumps it up to 16. And as of right now, because we're on the test server, the class is all the way down here because you get the class absolutely free. Uh, but I'm assuming he's going to be up here right after the Dino Tamer when it actually goes onto the live server. Now, actually getting this class is going to be... Very, very difficult if you, like, depending on the method at which you're going to grind the character. So, obviously, there's going to be store packs. There's going to be the Vanguardian pack right here, which is going to be for 3,000 credits. Roughly, if you're just buying credits, 3,000 is going to end up being 20 bucks. And you're going to have a little bit left over, right? So, let's say it's maybe 18 US dollars or something like that, right? So, very, very cool that you could just for $20 end up getting the class. Uh, but weird that you end up actually just getting the... Uh, the next costume for it, but you might not notice you are actually getting wing uh, wings out of this pack Which are actually going to be invisible wings. I know right? Uh, we'll talk about that in another video that talks about like how to craft all of the things with the new crafting table and the new biome and stuff But today we're gonna be focusing on how you actually get the class So the other thing too is that depending on the price of credit pouches This pack in itself is going to be roughly a million flux at least on PC as of right now when I'm recording this Credit pouches may end up actually going up in price on PC when this ends up going live and on console who knows what the prices are at They're very different as well So ultimately I'm just saying that this is probably going to be the easiest way that a free replay player is going to be able to grind up the Vanguardian Just because the way that you actually craft this guy is absurdly difficult now The reason for that you might be saying they're wondering why would they make it so affordable to actually buy this class with credits when you, uh, you know, when free-to-play players can still get this, uh, get the class this way. Now, the reason for that, obviously, is because credits are technically not free. You might be a free-to-play player and you might buy your credit pouches and technically get the Vanguardian pack for absolutely free by just grinding up your flux, but somebody had to spend money to get the credits in the game in the first place, to get those credit pouches so that you can end up actually buying the class pack in general, right? And then for pay to win players, obviously you're gonna have the option to just spend uh, $50 to get the uh, super pack. Interestingly enough, this is gonna come with the class, two costumes, and a whole bunch of other things, including a tome. Uh, there was, There is actually a third Vanguard pack that only will show up if you end up buying the Vanguardian pack. Now, the reason for this is because you buy this pack and then there's going to be another pack that shows up that essentially is going to give you this extra costume and some of the other items out of this full pack because, you know, maybe you ended up just buying this and then you're sitting there going, oh man, I don't want to have to craft that last costume. I, I just want to be able to buy it, but I don't want to spend $50 for a class and a costume that I already have. That's where that other pack is going to show up if you've purchased this one. And thus, you're going to be able to have it at a decreased value, right? So all of the items in the pack itself are craftable. There are free-to-play uh, methods of actually getting all this stuff, which is very interesting. So what I need to find right now is we actually got to hop on over to the hub. And I'm going to end up swapping over to a Neon World. And hopefully, we can actually just see the generation of the new Neon Sub World. So the Neon City still is going to end up being the standard uh, biome that you end up seeing in the game, but you're also going to see this variant of it, which is Luminopolis or whatever. It's kind of going to be a whole lunar, like very, very beautiful themed kind of an upgrade to the Neon City while not necessarily replacing it entirely. And then you're going to see, we got lucky enough, these structures right here. 
which do actually show up on the map. As you can see, this is the new icon right here, an outpost shrine. Now, we'll talk about these outpost shrines in another video and more specification because we've got quest NPCs, uh, and then we've also got this new resistor workbench. Now, you are going to be able to get this workbench and these NPCs in your club if you end up getting the new utility fixture, which is going to essentially end up giving you this thing, right? Or something to sim similar to that, right? Anyways, let's go to the resistors table. So this is where the class becomes very, very like apparent how difficult it is to actually attain because we have to get a coded message, an intriguing kernel map, and 60 sentient shards. Getting all of these new resources is going to be very, very difficult and actually requires you to go through quite a few hoops in order to actually get it. Because the decoder ring, for example, uh, 6,000 plasminium. Plasminium is a new resource that you end up getting out of this biome. There is going to be a tome where you get 30 plasminium for defeating every 25 dungeons. It's not a legendary tome, it's just a normal one. So over time, plasminium is going to end up being a resource that's going to be a lot easier to attain as it ends up uh, being out for a longer period of time. But as of when this update ends up hitting the live server, it's going to be a very, very coveted resource that is tradable as well. Yeah, so free-to-play players are going to have new methods of making flux. I'll have to put an updated flux farming tutorial video when all of that is uh, actually added to the game. Now, the weird thing is you're going to see charge circuit and memory matrix. What are these items and why do you need 20 of them? They're going to be in the material section. So the memory matrix is going to be quite expensive considering you need 20 of them. Uh, and then the charge circuit is going to be quite expensive considering, again, you need 20 of them. Uh, and then the plain metal ring. Uh, apparently this bad boy you actually craft over at a ring crafting table. So let me take a quick little peek and show you what the crafting components are for that. So that's just going to be right over here. Very, very cheap. Very easy to craft. Let me hop back into that new biome. And that's just to get the decoder ring, which is going to be required for the class, right? Then there's going to be the kernel map right here, which is going to end up costing more plasminium and a logic loop, which I'm pretty sure is right here in the materials. Uh, so you can see that's going to end up being quite expensive considering the fact that, again, you're going to need 20 of these. And this is all just for the class, mind you. Uh, and then there's going to be the coded message, which is going to cost another decoder ring. Uh, or actually, that just cost the decoder ring? Yeah, that just cost the decoder ring. Okay, so you need this item in order to craft this in the first place. And then look at that plasminium just jumping up in price. 5250 And then the class itself is going to end up costing all of those items as well as a sentient shard. Now... A sentience shard is going to be tied to the new rampage events or beacon summoning bosses. I mean, I have another video that's going to go into more detail of all of these bosses and how they end up working and stuff like that. But essentially, you're going to have a random chance of an hourly event not being a dragon challenge or a collection challenge. It's going to be a rampage. These happen pretty much like every four to five hours or something. It's actually ridiculous how uncommon they are. But uh, what you end up doing is you end up going into this neon biome and you're going to essentially end up finding an alternate version of Weeping Prophet, Daughter of the Moon, and Pinata God, right? You fight these guys, take them down with a group, and then for the day, you're going to be able to get one sentient shard from the Rampage event quest itself. Now you're sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, so I'm going to essentially have to grind 60 days worth of the sentient shard. No, don't worry, because there is actually another method to get a sentient shard, beacons. What beacons do is these offer you the option to craft a boss summoning tool that you can throw down in a club world to end up actually just fighting the boss with your club mates, right? And the cool thing is that as far as crafting goes, these are actually... I won't say they're super expensive, but they're not like necessarily like, uh, you know, they're they're not cheap, but they're not super expensive. They're kind of in the middle. And for some reason, the Daughter of the Moon one is just like cheaper than the other ones. I don't necessarily know why. Uh, maybe they ended up messing up on that one or something. But either way, what you're going to do is you throw one of these beacons down into your club world. And the person who throws down the beacon is going to end up getting a sentient shard. So technically speaking... That's the way that you can farm them without it actually being time gated. It's going to be very expensive to actually go this route, but it's still very cool that we have the option. And that's just for the class. So again, already, do you think that the class itself, just all on its own, is something that is going to necessarily be easy to do? 
by no means is it going to be easy. And in fact, I would say that if you're a free-to-play player, you're going to have better odds and it's going to be a lot less confusing for you to just sell all of the resources to craft a new class because they're going to be at an increased price. And then you just buy the credit pouches to just buy the, cre uh, buy the uh, pack itself right here because you're also going to get the invisible wings and this costume as well as uh, a couple other special items and a bunch of sentient shards and stuff like that, right? if we go to the wings section you're gonna see these are the wings right here they're gonna cost 80,000 flux and 65 logic loops 46 charged circuits again each of these items are going to end up being in the material section remember that one okay reapers and then 125 sentient shards so again even though these are just invisible wings the fact is they make them extremely difficult to attain which in that makes them feel a lot more valuable doesn't it which i really really like and again arguing the same point where then why is this so cheap because somebody had to spend money to get the credits so that a free-to-play player could even get this in the first place. But again, it's ultimately going to end up being even cheaper than buying pinatas. <laughs> uh, so then you're also going to end up getting a costume out of that pack as well. So remember that one. That's going to be this costume right here. So even more sentient shards. That's going to mean that you're going to have to summon 81 beacon bosses just to get this. And you saw how difficult those things were going to end up being. If you're just a complete free-to-play player... Uh, again, I would say go for the credits because otherwise this is going to be absolutely ridiculous. And if you are free to play, it does mean that you are not going to be able to get this new costume right here. Uh, as far as I remember, the extra pack that's not showing up right now, when you buy this pack, is going to show up for like $20 or something. And it's going to end up including the new costume as well as a couple other things, right? So it's kind of like an add-on uh, to the pricing, which I don't know. Maybe ultimately it's going to end up being cheaper than the $50 pack. But the $50 pack is obviously going to give you a couple extra things. But this is the costume if you want to actually craft it. So it, again, is going to be extremely expensive. So honestly speaking, if you want to actually get this costume the easy way, I would recommend that you just go the extra mile and spend the money, which, I mean, that's the whole thing. Like, I, I, I actually really like the method at which they ended up going with this, where it doesn't feel like the player is being punished for not spending money. It just kind of feels like a pay-to-win option where you can skip past it all if you want. But if you just want the raw class, you're just going to want to go for the credit pass. Uh, credit pouches, right? Because obviously that's going to be uh, a, a lot less time consuming going the whole route of actually crafting all these resources and then crafting the class, which again, makes this class feel that much more valuable because he feels like an end game thing and makes it feel like these packs are actually a really good deal. Because that's the whole thing that I've said for years is that a lot of the stuff that's in Trove doesn't feel like it's actually beneficial to buy in the store it more kind of feels like you're being bullied into it whereas with this you might argue that you feel bullied and pressured into actually buying the pack because it's that much easier than just grinding it but i like the fact that the option is there for free-to-play players that's a step in the right direction now here's something that's interesting as well all of the classes are going to end up having resistor costumes including the vanguard itself is going to have this extra resistor costume right here that you're going to have to craft this even if you end up buying the $50 pack, which as you can see is not as expensive as some of the other things, but it's still going to end up being pretty costly. So again, I'll have another video that's going to go into more detail about the crafting table itself. And over the next few months, once I end up slowly getting all of the different items out of the crafting table, I'll have videos showing all of that stuff. Because as of right now, it's just going to be like such a long time before you end up getting all the mounts, the wings, the costumes, and everything like that. So I'm going to have another video that's going to just show off and talk about all the different items that you can get out of this. Maybe it's going to be a useless video, but again, for the most part, it's the fact that people can actually see all of the items that are going to be coming with the update. Uh, especially because these NPCs right here, actually, like, this guy right here is one of the mounts that you can end up crafting. But anyways, most of all, we were just talking about the class and all of the stuff that you get out of the packs. And as you can see, it's just going to be more worthwhile to buy the credit pouches, which, again, means that they're going to end up making money off of somebody that's going to buy the credit pouches, right? Myself included, I'm going to buy credit pouches like crazy and sell them if I don't end up going absolutely broke by buying these stupid crater neon caches. Thanks for watching, though, folks. Very much appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, favorite, and subscribe for more daily content. This is going to build up loyalty points in my merch store. Links are in the description for that. And links are in the description for Gawkbox, which is a method that you can use to donate to me for absolutely free. Sign on. Stay epic, everybody.